Hey guys, I'm Shenna. I want to thank you so much for joining us today for Upper Room Church Online. If you liked today's message and would like to hear more, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope that you will take the time to visit our website at upperroompensacola.com to get plugged in. While you're there, you can also request prayer and give a financial donation. We can't wait to connect with you. Today, Pastor Nathan is bringing an encouraging word. So settle in and prepare your hearts to receive what God has to say to you. We love you and are praying for you. Hey, Upper Room, friends and family. It's so good to see you. It's even better to be back together on this Sunday morning. And this is just an historic Sunday for, for us for many reasons. Um, we haven't met in a physical building in 11 weeks, but also today is Pentecost Sunday. So it's a big day. And I, I just wanna thank you, especially those that have been watching online. And if you're watching online right now, I wanna let you know that you are such a part of this family and we've been so encouraged by you just being with us. You could be anywhere in the internet world right now, but you're here with us and I, I just enjoy our time together. I'm so glad that you're a part of this family. And I wanna let you know that if, if you are live within the community here of, of our church, that if you aren't here in person, that's okay. Um, you don't have second class faith because uh, you're a little bit still cautious of gathering in the building. I, I just wanna let you know that that's fine. And I, I totally expect families to uh, stay engaged online and it may be for several more months. And that's why I wanna make sure that we're here um, wherever you are each week. We wanna bring you an encouraging message and let you know that you can be more connected than ever and not be in a physical building every week. And so that's my prayer, that's my hope. And, and today I wanna share a special message around Pentecost Sunday. And Pentecost Sunday is, is special for a lot of reasons, but um, one big reason in Acts chapter two is where we see the, the very beginning of the New Testament church. And so we, um, you know, a lot of times we focus on the experience. We know that they, there was 120, they were gathered together in the upper room. It was an incredible thing that happened. It said that the Holy Spirit moved in a, in a powerful way. And, and just the, the power and presence of God really was a catalyst for the church to begin. But there's a few things that happen behind the scenes that sometimes we read right over. You know, one of the things about the, the Feast of Pentecost is before that, it was called the Feast of Weeks. And so every nation in the entire world was represented in Jerusalem during this time. And so, uh, you know, on this day, uh, during the, the, the Pente Pentecost Sunday, one of the greatest miracles was that when the 120 came out of the upper room and, and God was speaking through them, every nation heard their own language. And so it was a beautiful picture of this global partnership when the church was birthed that it wasn't just for a certain demographic of people. It wasn't just for a certain nation or a certain person, uh, you know, certain demographic or a certain community or a certain area or continent. No, it was God's way of saying this gospel, this power, this new church, capital C, is for everybody. And so it was this beautiful picture of partnership. And I know that the last couple of days, if you've been reading the news, there's two things that we've seen all, you know, over and over and over. And one of the biggest things that I've, I've noticed is, is partnership. NASA, for the first time in the history of its existence, is partnering with a private sector company, SpaceX. And so they're launching uh, the first manned crew into space uh, since 2011. And I think the biggest, the coolest part about that is not so much the spaceship, and, and, and this, you know, what's happening there and, and what they're doing. The coolest part to me was the partnership. The fact that this, this government agency, this private sector company were partnering to make this possible. And then you turn the channel <laughs> and then you see the opposite. You see what's going on in some of the states in our country right now where you've got certain demographics of people fighting and you've got rioting. And, and, and so you see partnership you see the effects of partnership and then you see prejudice. You see people being poorly treated. You see racism. 
Uh, you, you, you see things that should not be happening. And so I want to focus on today the power of partnership. And I think the opposite of that is prejudice. The opposite of that is having a preconceived idea about a person because of who they are or where they came from or the color of their skin that causes hurt and pain. The opposite of that to me is, is, is partnering. It's connecting on a deep level, regardless of where you've come from, what your background is, where you go home to. And this is the beauty of Acts chapter two. This is the real miracle of Pentecost. And so there's a few things that we see that begin to happen in our lives when we have partners. When we engage in partnership, it's, it's, a, it's a miraculous thing. And so Jesus, he, you know, we, we have a, a few accounts of what Jesus said and what he did, and we know him as the Gospels. We got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And each one of them gave us their perspective of the life of Jesus. You know, we know Luke was a doctor, so we got some details there. But in John, uh, there's five chapters just on one conversation that Jesus had with his disciples. Chapters, you know, 17 from 13 to 17 of the book of John is, is from one night. It was at the upper room, we know as the Last Supper, and, and John in five chapters records one conversation that Jesus had with his disciples. And the big overall theme was this, I'm about to go away and there's two things you need to do. You need to stick together and partner and you need to really lean into this new partner that John calls the Holy Spirit. He uses a word that's only used by John in Greek, it's parakletos. We don't see it used any other time besides this conversation that night between Jesus and his disciples. And so each chapter, chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, gives a principle on partnership. What is necessary to have healthy partnerships, godly partnerships, and how to have this partnership with God now through the Holy Spirit. And so these five chapters, each one gives us a principle. I just learned this, and when I, when I learned it, I was like, this is incredible, I gotta share it. <laughs> and so I wanna share it with you. So we're just gonna go through each one of these chapters together. And, and so the first chapter is John 13. And I, I want to give you the kind of the, the, the verse and then the principle. And so again, Jesus is about to go to the cross. Um, Jesus has got one last night with his disciples and he's teaching them and he's preparing them for his departure. And during this dinner, he does something that blows all their minds. He gets up, he takes his coat off, he gets down on his knees and he begins to wash their feet. And so this shocks them. When he, when he goes down to, to begin to wash Peter's feet, he said, he, he almost didn't let him. He said, no, no, you know, Peter told Jesus, I should be washing your feet. What's, what's going on here? And so Jesus is illustrating a principle in partnership. And I'm gonna read it to you. He got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing. He wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water in a basin and he washed their feet, dried them with the towel. And so number one, the first principle to have healthy partnerships in our life is we've got to be serving one another. Now, this was a concept that was brand new to the disciples. This was a concept that was brand new to the world, really. When you think of leadership, the higher up you go, the more people serve you. That's the way that the world would describe it. A leader is, is how many people do you have working for you? Jesus flipped it upside down. He said, no, a real leader, this is how you measure a real leader. How many people is he serving? And to have a healthy partnerships in our life, the first principle is this, we have to be serving each other. And so it, it, this goes both ways. Because if you roll a few chapters back to like John 12, Jesus had his feet washed by Mary. And so what I think the principle illustrates is this, every person needs an upstream and a downstream. And what I mean by that is, is an upstream is who is pouring into your life? Where are you gaining wisdom from? And so as we serve one another, as people serve you, you have, a, you have a downstream. So what you're gaining, you're giving. So what's coming into your life, it's not coming into your life to stay, it's going through you. And so serving one another, he, he illustrated this principle so well by washing their feet. They didn't understand. And the other part of this is, 
is somebody has to be close enough in your life to know the dirty details that maybe you hide from the rest of the world. Think about that. They had to take their shoes off. That's something I was weird. I, that weirded me out in middle school, right? I, I was that kid that had, my son inherited it as well. I had stinky feet. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to confess it. You can smell my feet, son, from like a mile away. And, and he got it from me. And I was so paranoid in middle school uh, to take my shoes off, even in, like in, during PE class and stuff, because I didn't want people, you know, it's like you don't want people seeing that. And, and so, so let's take that application to another level. Jesus was saying there needs to be somebody in your life that knows the details that you don't want the whole world to know. This was not a glamorous thing, but it was necessary to have this partnership. Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, this is what he told Peter, you have no part in me. That word, he basically said, if you wanna be my partner, there can't be any secrets. I've gotta know the mess in your life, you get to know the mess in my life. And so that was the first principle. Then we go to the next chapter, and he gives the second principle. And the second principle is this. I'm going to read it. It, it says in, in, in verse 1 of chapter 14, Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You know, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And so that night, Jesus was talking a lot about, about his death. He was talking a lot about the end of the world and the end of the age. He was talking a lot about how he was going to leave. And he had to go to his father, but there was somebody else that was going to come and take his place, the, the, the Parakletos, the Holy Spirit. And so the disciples were discouraged. And so right out of the gate, the second principle that Jesus shows us with partnership is that the, the primary aspect, one of the primary aspects in having a healthy partnership is that I'm encouraging you and you're encouraging me. And that's what Jesus did. He was talking a lot about stuff that they didn't understand. He was talking a lot about the future. And so he stops the conversation. He says, listen, don't let your hearts be troubled. <laughs> I know there's a lot going on in the world. I know there's a lot of things that's confusing right now. And, and I want to encourage you. And I was told one of the greatest illustrations I've, I've ever been given on how do you know when somebody needs encouragement? It's really simple. You take two fingers and you place it on their wrist. And if you can't feel nothing bump in there, place it on their, on their neck. And if you feel a pulse and they're alive, that means they need encouragement. <laughs> and, and, and the second primary principle of partnership is we have to have somebody in our life that is encouraging us. We need people in our life that's speaking the best over us. We need people in our life that can call us on a bad day and say, hey, I just want you to know you're making a difference. I want, you, I, I want this for you so bad because there's times in my life that I've wanted to quit. There's times in, I, in my life where I have said to my wife, I don't think I'm gonna do this anymore. I think I'm going to go find something else to do. Not, not our relationship, uh, I, but like this, church and all this stuff. And for her to look me in the eye and say, no, Nathan, you, you can do this. Or to get that phone call that just really happened in the last several months where I was on the, one of the lowest points in my life and somebody just called me out of the blue and said, hey, I, I just want you to know God put you on my heart and I wanted to just tell you you're making a difference. What you're doing is, is I, I just want to encourage you to just keep going. And they didn't know that I was at a point in my life where I was a little discouraged. And a real partner, a real partner is not gonna kick you when you're down. A real partner is, is, is gonna give you a hand up. A real partner is gonna speak life into you. Uh, uh, Hebrews 3 verse 13, but encourage one another daily, daily. And so we got to have that in our life. And, and, and I love this because not only does the Holy Spirit do that for us, I believe that with all my heart, that God whispers into our ear when we feel like giving up, when we feel defeated, but God will also use people. God will put it on their heart to call you. Or, or maybe you've, you've had somebody on your mind this week and you've been thinking about them. And, you, and, and that a lot of times is God's way of saying, you need to call that person, send them a text. Let them know you're thinking about them. Let them know that you're, you're praying for them. You never know what somebody's going through. You never know what somebody's facing on the inside. And this is what I'm finding in life. If I need encouragement, if, if I don't have enough encouragement in my life, the best thing I can do to get encouragement is to give it. If it's lacking in my life, if I don't have, then I, the, the number one way to get it is to give it. 
And so that's the, the second principle here of partnership, Jesus. And then, we, and then he gives us one more. We, we go to the next chapter, chapter 15. And this is when Jesus starts talking about the vines and the branches. He says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. He said, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And when it comes to the power of partnerships, the third principle is this, is that we have to be producing with one another. That there is no such thing as a self-made man or a self-made woman. It doesn't exist. That it, when we get in our ego and we start getting in our pride and we start taking, you know, thinking that we are, self, you know, we've grinded to the top and we made it to the top by ourselves and nobody started at the bottom. Now I'm here. I had no help. You know, I just fought it out in the street by myself. Like that's, that's not real. That's not real. There's no such thing as a person that's, that is self-made. Somebody gave birth to them, right? Somebody gave birth to her. Somebody taught you in elementary school. Somebody put your diapers on. Somebody warmed up a bottle for you. Somebody, somebody helped you. Uh, uh, Mr. Rogers, I loved watching him when I was a kid. He talked about the invisible gift. And he would say, I want to give you the invisible gift right now. And he would encourage the people that was watching. Take one minute. I, I want to do this. Take, take a, just right now, think in your mind about all the people that helped you get to where you are right now. The mom that gave birth to you, the dad that contributed somehow, right? He may not have been there, but he contributed. They, 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 he, so there, you've got that. The teachers, the social workers, right? The doctors, principals. You know, when I, when I think about my life and, and the, the people that helped me get to here, it's hundreds. And so true partnership is realizing that in order to do what God's called you to do, you need other people. You, and not only that, it's realizing and being grateful for the people that have helped you up to this point. Because we, we have to sometimes remind ourselves of that. Jesus was telling his disciples, hey, there's no way for you to do what I've called you to do unless you remain in me. We're going to produce fruit together. You can't be a branch by yourself. You can't be an island to yourself over here. There's no such thing as, as independence when it comes to the kingdom of God. It's interdependence. We need one another. We need one another. We depend on one another. And the way that we really reach our fullest potential is when we work together. It's the Mount Everest principle. I'm sure you've heard it before. Uh, the first dozen or so people that tried to climb Mount Everest never made it. Some of them died. They lost their life. And they realize that the higher up you go on Mount Everest, the more people that you need to get there. And so to produce good results in your life or to, to really produce and do what God's called you to do, you're going to need a team. You're going to need to lean into the relationships that's in your life. And Deuteronomy 32 verse 30 says it like this. If one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. We're, we really are better together. We really are, it's, it's when we work together as a team, John Maxwell says it like this, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with a team. And so G Jesus is rolling out these principles. He's, he's blowing the disciples' minds. I mean, when I first learned this, it really, I was like, this is so good. And then he rolls over to the next, to the next chapter, chapter 16, and he gives another principle. And, and this is how he starts the chapter. He says, all this I've told you so that you will not go astray. Some translation says, so that you will not fall away. Well, that word astray in the Greek is scandaliso. And basically he says, I'm telling you this so that you don't fall into a scandal. Because there's a real enemy out there that's after your life. There's a real enemy that doesn't want you to have a healthy family, that doesn't want you to have a healthy business, that doesn't want you to have a healthy relationship with God. And he's scandalous and he will go to extremes and Jesus, he says, in order to stay in partnership with me, with each other, you've got you to watch your, your, your partner six, is what he's saying. You've got to be protecting one another, protecting one another. Because I've heard it said, we're all one step away from stupid, right? We're all one decision away from the front page, one bad decision. And, and when it comes to being in partnership with people in our lives, it's necessary because they're watching our back. They see things that we don't see. 
about eight years ago, I was in Nicaragua with a group of guys and we were, uh, we were working at an, at an orphanage and, and uh, in the afternoons we'd go surf. And then one afternoon we went surfing and the surf wasn't very good, but I'm the kind of person, you know, I'm, for, I, I'm gonna surf regardless, especially when I'm in a, a third world country like that, where the surf to me is always great. And so I'm surfing by myself and, and my buddies are on the balcony watching and one of my friends decided to paddle out with me. And, and he paddles out with me. And in about 10 minutes after he paddles out, I can't tell you exactly what he screamed at me um, because it's, it's not G rated, but it, bleep, Nathan, there's a crocodile behind you. And I look back and I have, I'm, I'm like nose to nose. With, we're surfing this river mouth. And so these crocodiles come in and out. I'd never seen a crocodile. And if he wouldn't have seen the crocodile, I would have probably never seen a crocodile. It, I was seen it one time, then I'd have met Jesus kind of thing. Because he, he, was, he, was, he was on my tail. And, and when it comes to life, there's a devil out there who's scandalous and will sneak up. And he will, he will, he will wait for the opportune time. And if you don't have somebody, a partner, that's watching out for you, and the thing about this is, 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 is you really can only watch, I mean, how many people can you really protect? And I'm not talking about hundreds of people. I'm talking about a close group of people in your life that are asking you hard questions, that are not impressed with you, but they want the best for you. And they can, they can say things like, hey, you probably shouldn't do that, probably shouldn't go there, probably shouldn't be visiting those websites. Complete transparency, but they'll speak the truth to you in love. Why? Because there's a scandal out there, right? There's, there's, a, there's a crocodile that's just waiting on you to turn your back. And so we, we need people that are looking out for us. We need people that are looking out for our souls. And then the last, last little nugget here, this is chapter 17. And so five principles, the, the power of partnership. Jesus gives the last one and he looks at his disciples and he says, this, you know, he, he, he looks to heaven and he prays. And this is a pretty controversial verse, verse nine. He's talking to his father. He says, I'm, I pray for them. He's praying for his disciples, but he says this, I'm not praying for the world. I'm, I'm praying for those that you've given me. And I've found in life, especially now I'm learning as, as, as new to, to being a pastor, is there's no way that I could pray for everybody that's a part of our church, even on a weekly basis. I can't do it. There's no way that I could, I could be there for every person that calls Upper Room Church their home. There's no way. And so I'm learning that I can't pray for everybody, but everybody needs to be prayed for. Somebody has to be, you gotta know that somebody is praying for you. And that's, that's really, when it comes to deepening partnerships in our life, one of the things that God has given us is this incredible tool that he calls prayer. And when we pray for our, our brothers, when we pray for our wife, when we pray for our children, when we pray for the people that are in our group, that's, that's why you're, you're gonna hear me. I, I, I say this all the time, but if you're not in a group, if you don't have a group of people in your life, that, that are praying for you and you're praying for them. And I know that this can't be hundreds of people. This is small groups. This is just a few, but it, it's life or death sometimes. I mean, it's that critical. I want this for every person that calls Upper Room Church home. I want you to know that somebody's praying for you, that if you needed somebody, they would be there. And I wanna be able to do that in return for somebody else. And that's the real core of having a partner. That's the real power of the Paracletos, is that he's praying the Father's will for us. And that's how we demonstrate that love to our brothers and sisters, is we pray for them. We let them know, hey, I, you're going through this. I, I, I don't think words will work right now. I'm gonna pray for you. Let me take you by the hand. Some of the, the critical moments in my life, what's gotten me through is somebody who just called me up and said, I just want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. And that's how I want to close this out. The power of partnership. How do we deepen those, those partnerships in our life? We pray for the people that are around us. And so let's do that right now. Father, I thank you so much 
for the power of your word. I thank you, God, that you sent the Holy Spirit in our life to be that prayer partner. You said that when our words run out, that the Holy Spirit will pray through us the will of God, that he will give us the words, these groans and utterings that are that, that, that not even in English, that he prays the will of God. And so right now, I, I wanna pray over every person that's watching this. I wanna pray over every person that's here. And I just ask God that, that you would bring them strength. Lord, I pray that you would just reveal to us your son, Lord, let us know you in a deeper way. Lord, let us let us deepen that partnership with you, God. Let us walk hand in hand with the Holy Spirit. It, let, let us let us consult you on every decision that we make. And then I pray for people that you you maybe you don't have any close relationships in your life. I want you to have that. I want you to have people in your life that you look to as partners, that you know that they would be there for you no matter what. If you got thrown in jail, they, they'd come visit you, right? If something happened, you know they would be there. Every person needs that. Every Paul needs a Timothy. Every Timothy needs a Paul. We need partners in our life. And so I pray that, that God, you would deepen the relationships that we have now. Help us to be intentional. Strengthen the partnerships that we have in our life now, Lord. And let us just continue to walk hand in hand with you. And we just thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for spending this time today with me. It's been awesome to be together. I can't wait to see you again uh, next week, same time, same place. We'd love for you to join us online. And again, if, if you're not in a group, you'd like to get in a group, you want that partnership in your life, go to upperroompensacola.com. You can sign up to be a, a part of a group or you can lead a group. But I want that for you. Every person needs a partner. Every person needs close community, and I want that for you. So it's, it's been great to see you. We love you. See you soon. Thanks again for joining us online today. Be sure to follow the links provided to get connected. We look forward to seeing you soon. We love you and are praying for you this week.